Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Vivi's Corner. Happy Super Bowl Sunday. Because this will be out on Sunday, okay? I'm recording early, whatever. It will be out around 4 p.m. on Super Bowl Sunday. Let it be, okay? But y'all know first things first. Make sure that you have done what? Subscribe to my channel. To become a whole Jaybird, Jaybird, dun, 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 and dun, okay? Do not get also like the video. Do not get also, wait. Like the video, follow me on social media at Jaylee's Corner on IG, also on Twitter. Like the video, comment in the comment section, and hit that good old share button, okay? This is Growing Up Hip Hop Season 7, Episode 6, okay, and what not. Now, do not forget, y'all, tonight I will be live after Rihanna's halftime performance. It will be a live at the show chit chat how we used to do for the verses or whatever. So again, come on right into the corner right after we got a performance or whatever, and we can talk about the performance. I feel like most folks are going to come around for that. Not really trying to watch this role. So again, come on over. It won't be long either. It'll be like 30 minutes tops, okay? Because we're going to go discuss the, the, the halftime show. That's it, okay. But let's get into what we came here to get into, and that is the growing up hip hop of it all. These folks, you know, just being folks, these folks just being folks, teaching each of having the conversations. Sequoia trying to bang a little twist or whatever, and Ali again to prevent off as husband Eric, okay. But first, we had TT and Pepper having a bit of a chit chat, okay. I said, Hey, Pepper, how you doing? Peppa's work that she had done to her face is settling. It's settling. It's, oh, Lord, my neighbor music. I hope y'all can hear it. I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to keep on going, okay? Um, but, yeah, Peppa's facial thing that she had done or whatever, whether, whatever whatever it was, it's settling. Her her face looked like it's, you know, sitting there or whatever. But her and TT talk. Now, it's a good thing that they, we know they are, they are getting better. Because TT, Peppa, and Egypt has been a back and forth, back and forth mess for about three seasons now. Okay, it's been a minute. It's been because this is before TT was even pregnant, and TT's son about three. Okay, so again, people see Peppa didn't move to Vegas. Peppa moves like every two seasons. I'm like, this is like the fourth or fifth move on the show. We only seven seasons in. Why do you keep moving anyway? Peppa has moved to Vegas. Okay, when I mean, she moved to Nevada, just like Egypt also moved to Nevada. Is is Nevada a cheaper state? I ain't saying they bore. I'm just saying, like, why did they both move to Nevada of all places? I mean, that'd be as well. Uh, Peppa told her how, you know, she had to have neck surgery. Okay, Peppa was in an accident a while ago, and so she's had some work done or whatever, and so she's in now because of the neck pain she's been having, she would need to have neck surgery, and the doctors are telling her if she had this surgery, it will for sure change the tone of her voice, her voice is going to change, and because she's like, I already got like a little, a little deeper voice. I have to be sure that this won't affect my music career because that's how I make my money. If I don't, if I can't sound, you know, right, rapping or singing or whatever, you know, is it worth it? Yes, it's worth it. Your health is above everything else, okay? Leave it, let, let that be. Now, she also brings up how she's happy and enjoying being single right now. She, you know, the only thing that upsets her is the fact that sometimes she don't have no penis. You know, I, look, people, I forget, I'm here, hey, y'all, wait. Hey y'all. <laughs> Hi. Okay. It's it's look. I look real basic or whatever, because I'm like, it's uh, it's recording. But but hi. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? My nails are still on. Gotta go. Anyway, but yeah. Uh Peppa's enjoying being single, but she just like, you know, sometimes she wants some 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 penis in her life or whatever. And that's the only thing that sometimes make her upset. But she just go grab some batteries and a vibrator and then she handles it. Okay, now they discussed Titi going to visit Egypt because again, Egypt also lives in Nevada. Pep lives in Vegas. Egypt lives about an hour and a half away. Okay, from there, I'm not like, sure so she lives like in the outskirts, outskirts or whatever. But Peppa wants teaching Egypt to kind of get back on a better place, better playing field, better conversations as cousins or whatever. So you should go visit Egypt while you're here in town because TT lives in that well in California. She's now here in in Vegas visiting Pep, 
And because you're here, why not go visit Titi and go visit Egypt and go talk to her? And Titi said, well, why should I go visit? Why? What reason? Why should I go visit her? Meaning, why can't she come visit me? And Peppa, look, in that whole TT Peppa, Egypt situation, I blame Sam. Sam was the cause of all of them falling out. It's on him. Um, I do feel like both TT and Egypt both also played a part in the continuation of the falling out. You know what I'm saying? But I wasn't really mad for TT. Like, you know, I'm gonna leave them be because Egypt was stuck on Sam and I can't deal with that. I'm done. Okay. But Peppa said, look, you're the oldest, and someone has to do an extra step. And it could, you know, it is it could be the older person, because again, Egypt is young and young-minded or whatever. And so she's also said you have a different outlook now. Okay, you're a mom now, you're married now, whatever your outlook on life is different. So I just think you're saying it could be you, but it's your choice. <sighs> you know, T I'll I'll think about it. I don't know. I'm saying because I don't want it to be a forced thing. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be forced to go and talk to her if that ain't what I want to do. I agree with that too. No one wants to be forced to do anything they don't want to do. Now Peppa also asked, like, hey, are you going to Egypt and Sam's wedding? Even though Egypt and Sam had that quick shotgun wedding in Ve was it in Vegas? Like it was a quick little way, a qu quick little, you know what I'm saying, shotgun, courthouse, Vegas chapel wedding or whatever. But they are planning a second wedding where people will get invited and TT was invited. But T T said, I don't know if I'm coming. I don't know. I, I have not I have not changed how I feel about things. I don't think they, they I don't think they have changed how they feel about things or whatever. So we shall see if. You know, I'm going to go to the thing. Now, at the same time, they sit on there talking. Um, I'm just happy they're having a conversation. I'm happy, you know, TT and, and Pep ain't fussing or whatever. And it's, you know, it's, it's cool. It's a starting point to things getting back to them being family. Okay, but while sitting in her, in her new house, okay, in her new house, uh, Pep was in my new car. You know, my car, you know, was delivered. I got to go see you know, what the car looks like or whatever, because it's my gift to myself, and I love it so much, and you know what I'm saying, because I bought it for myself, because then she's single, she has some, I think because Pep out here doing tours with Saw or whatever, she's making some good money, not good, which she's making some money, good money now, whatever, because she around here living life. Okay, she around here living life. I want to show y'all her house because they were sitting in a nice room, a nice large room. They look cute. And I always say, if you can do a scene where the cameras can show both people in the scene, it's a nice ass room. It looked nice. That's some nice furniture. It's some nice ambiance. You see the big old tree behind. It's it's it's, it's tree for tree. -ish. <laughs> it's you know it's, it's, it's called what, what was it called? Great trees and forests and greenery. It's greenery. It's greenery outside. I can't think of the word right now. Leave me be. But again, I'm like, oh, that's a nice ambiance, Peppa. That's a nice space, girl. Okay, a, a seating for like nine. Well, maybe it's six, eight. Because it's three on each side and two on the ends. So that's eight. Okay, so it fit eight people or whatever. But I'm like, that's, it's a nice decor. It's nice decor. And then her new car was outside. I said, oh. Now, first of all, that car looked like a Sebring, okay? Y'all remember when Christ was Sebrings? That it could possibly look like a Sebring. But Sebrings was made to look like other cars, too. I'm not saying Peppa got a Sebring. I'm saying it looked like it could be that. But I know it's a fancy car. And TV said, girl, mama, lady, that car is not a grandma car. You are, you're not a grandmother, okay? You cannot fit a dang on car seat in the back seat. I doubt if you can. And Peppa maybe didn't think about that or whatever, but we shall see, okay? But again, at least TT and Peppa was around here having a good time talking, okay? Now, next up, we have Sequoia and Devin. Y'all know I don't like either of these people. That little, little Casey and little JoJo, okay? Both of them irk my nerve because they walk around here looking for attention. Looking for attention that God said do not look for, but they looking anyway, okay? Maybe the attention they didn't, think, they didn't even get them. I don't know. My point is, they get on my nerve. They get on my nerve. They walking around here or whatever. Now, Devin bring up how tiny, Sequoia Mama, 
you know, it's out of town. She's out of town with lazy and whatnot, okay? And so Tiny asked him, hey, can you kind of step in a little bit and help organize, you know, this 50 years of hip-hop celebration that, that we're trying to have? We need your help in getting things together. Meaning, I need you to talk to people and tell them that we have it because what else can you do? Because I'm like, what else does he do? I don't know. Now, he also tells Sequoia that uh, 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 Tiny and, and, and Lazy and them, they are going to actually have Cree help plan the event because why Cree is an event planner. Okay, that's one of her pictures, okay? And I'm like, it makes sense. The show is supposed to be about them utilizing each other's talents and showcasing what they do. So, of course, if someone is having a celebration, you should use the person on, on, on the show who is an event planner. We need to see what Cree does, okay? Now, you go, I don't like that. You know, I don't like that. You know I'm saying, I don't like the creature calling Cree the creature. I was like, Sequoia, sit your tree loving, because her name is Sequoia, sit your tree self down. Sit down somewhere. I don't get why Sequoia has such an issue with Cree because Cree called out the truth that your daddy was, is, could be, should be, was, should not have been an alcoholic who was. A drunk for years. It was public knowledge. How are you upset that in a conversation about your parents, someone brings up the truth? Okay, she did not say that JoJo was around here, you know, giving blowjobs for cash. That ain't what she said. Now that would piss me off. But just saying, hey, your daddy was an alcoholic. That's true. And you being upset with your mama about leaving your daddy. Okay, and dating lazy. While being separated and that not being appropriate. And Cree then point out, well, your mama probably don't like that that you did, okay? And she don't fuck with you. Well, she happy about you having a child aware like that. Some kids frown up on that. Like, it was petty, but it was true. Okay? I'm like, whatever. Anyway, so she, I don't like the creature. And me being around the creature, that would be deadly. Girl, bye. Cree would sit on you. Okay? Anyway, and I'm not trying to be an advocate for Creed. I'm an advocate for let's make things make sense. Your dislike of Creed does not make sense because you're a hypocrite. A hip o crit. Anyway, now anyway, um, she also said, because of, I don't know if I want to be involved in this. Girl, what are you going to do? You're going to sing on that? What, 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 what is your role in hip hop? What songs do you have out that I can download and ignore? Let me know. Anyway, <clears throat> but I don't know because this may be a messy event. If you cause mess, it would be. If pre cause mess, if anybody causes mess, it could be a messy event. But you need to let go of this foolishness with Cree based on her just saying the truth about your daddy. Anyway, she then brings up how she likes twists. Oh, yes, Sequoia Tree, who don't like her mama dating rappers, likes a rapper. We be flirting with each other. You know what I'm saying? It be cute. And I like it. I like I like twists. I, mm -hmm. I told y'all. I told y'all. Sequoia out here trying to get with little twists. Now, I don't know why, but she is. Okay. Anyway, so I'm, I thought rappers was, was weren't the one. I thought rappers was not the move. I thought rappers was wrong here. She ain't treating y'all bad. Oh, so yo, you can you can fuck at your mama. And about wanting to date lazy, a grown man who hopefully has, has outsown his wild oats, okay? But you want to date Lil Twist? Who, really? You piss at your mama for what you want to do? Yes, ma'am, you are. I guess that make me hypocrite. Yes, it's the definition of a hypocrite, okay? And now Devin had a great advice. And Lil Casey said, look, cousin. At the end of the day, people, most people date within their industry. You, you date with the folks you are around the most. So if y'all are in the music industry, that's probably who y'all going to date. Okay? You want someone who also <clears throat> kind of understands what you're going through. So it's not abnormal for your mama to date lazy or for you to want to date twist. That's not abnormal. However, it's a hypocritical situation when you complain and fuss and cuss and fuss and fuss and fuss and fuss when you want to do the same thing with a less known rapper. Now, Devin is the way of walking away and Devin trying to rap proves to me why he ain't a rapper. We don't know that man, okay? We don't want to know him if he... Look, I said those are the worst rhymes I've ever heard. Ever. 
Anyway, then we have Devin who set up a little hangout session at the brewery, okay, with him, uh, Sequoia Tree, uh, uh, Twist, Alia, and Eric. I said, why is Twist wearing a hat with a tag on it? I'm like, why? Did no one tell him there was a tag on it? I'm assuming the hat he was wearing, because the hat said brewery something. I'm like, maybe he walked in and put the hat on or bought the hat when he walked in, and he just did not think to take the tag off. I'm like, but did that even production like twist? It? Is he giving the hat back? I hope I hope he not give that hat back because if anyone tried on a war hat for like an hour of filming, do not put that hat back because your head is in it. That's your hat not pay for it. Pay for it. Okay, but I'm like, why well, I was like the tag was urging my other niggas a tag right there. There's no one see the tag. And the fact that Devin is always wearing white teeth with his name on, I'm like, sir, why do you do that? Now, I know for these shows, you know, you usually can't wear, like, name brand this and name brand that. So maybe he, like, oh, I can't wear a, 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 a polo shirt or whatever, or, or whatever name brand shirt, you know, because you can't have the brand name on it. Maybe he said, okay, I'm going to wear a shirt with my name on it. But what do you do? Like, Devin Haley, what, what does that mean? Are you a producer? Are you a boxer? Are you a, a, a turtle gatherer? What do you do? Are you a dentist? Okay. Are you a trash man? Are you an engineer? Do you work for Fritos? I don't know. But what that we, you, your name on your shirt? Just wear a plain shirt. Cause I'm like, why is it's always a white tee? And I'm like, is it is it a marker or did you really go and get? Simple white tee with your name written on it just because, sir. Stop it. Anyway, Twist asked the queen, hey, let's go talk separately. Because when Devin told her that he invited Twist as well, oh, I can't dress just perfectly because the titties was out. Girl, you up here serving titties at the bar uh, to Twist? And that's not no knock to Twist. My point remains of her fussing at her mama so much, but she round here desperately with her titties out trying to get Twist's attention. Don't do it. To stop. Okay, again, the uh, the hip the, the hypocrisy of it all. Now, twist. Like, hey, let's go talk about. Let's go talk by ourselves, okay? Because again, he knows they be flirting back and forth. He acknowledges it. Okay. Now, the so her titties, come sit down. Okay. He like, hey, you look great. Yeah. Um. So we have to stop this. It's over. We had to chill. and okay? We had to stop immediately. It's over. Why? What do you mean? What are you talking? What's over? Well, we haven't done, we haven't done anything. I know we have not done anything. We got to stop. Look, 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 look. I'm trying to work it out with my girl, my ex. Okay. But I see you with temptation. Okay. You get big booty, big boobs, whatever. You're beautiful, and I just don't want the the the, 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 the girl. <laughs> I don't want the temptation. Okay, so we have to stop all the flirting that we've been doing. Okay, to stop it because you and this could mess up what I'm trying to fix with my ex. When she, if she see me lusting after you and looking at you, whatever, and the little flirting thing, that can mess me up. So we have to stop it. Okay. Now I appreciate him being honest with her. I, I'm happy he was honest in talking to her. But, Twist, you need to control yourself in general, okay? Sequoia out here talks her coochie away does not mean you have to respond, okay? And, so, again, I appreciate him being honest and saying, hey, I, I know we flirting back and forth, but we have to stop it. You can just not engage. When she talks her coochie away, just duck and dodge. Duck and dodge, okay? But, again, I'm happy he told her up front because this is the thing. Now that he's told her, hey... We can't be flirting back and forth. I'm trying to not be, you know, uh, uh, you know, dipping and dodging, dipping and dodging, dipping into temptation. So I, I want you to know what I'm, I'm trying to fix things with my girl. So let's just stop. Now, this is the thing. Sequoia Tree still trying to toss her coach his way. It's proof she, she needs attention because after he told you what he's trying to do, you could cross that line. Yeah, you could. You know what I'm saying? And we can talk off camera because this is on camera. Girl. Saying on camera, we should talk off camera because this is on camera stuff. He's like, no, 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 baby. If you watching this, this is not just for this for cameras. Meaning, don't make my girl watch this and think I'm lying on camera to save face. No, I'm really again keep your cooch 
to yourself, Sequoia Tree. Why and how are you still trying to fuck that man? He just told you he's trying to be good. He's trying to be good. When someone tells me they do not want to dip their foot into temptation, I'm going to let them be. Okay, cool. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. But you at the table still trying to, trying to tempt him. So he has to want to control himself. And Sequoia, get your hot until somewhere else and get out of face. Okay? Now, next we see Twist going to talk to his pastor. Because as he said, he's trying to be better. Now, Twist brings up how, you know, when he was young, he was really in the church, okay? But he then moved out of his mom's house around 14 because he got famous. Some song he did at 10 years old or whatever, I guess it was popping up. I don't remember, I don't remember any Twist songs verbatim. I know he had at least one or two hits with, uh, with Cat, was it Cat Money? Little Money? Girl? Whatever they, whoever they are. Young Money. I know that. I just can't remember what the song was or nothing. But he said it happened it was around 10. Then once it was around 14, he moved out, he moved out of his mom's house because again, I got famous. But then when I moved out and got into that world of entertainment, I fell down a whole downward path of just not today with Jesus. Okay. That he used to be in the church. Okay. But in the entry, he just fell, he fell down. Okay. He was living a fast life, and it, it was just a lot for him to go through. And he even spoke about him, you know, getting, you know, going to prison for prescription pills. Now, we all know for a fact that was around the time he was hanging out with Justin Bieber. And we've always said he took the rap for Justin Bieber and went to prison. I've always heard that. That's always been said. I'm going to leave that be. Okay. But he's trying to get back into his faith and just get on a better path and not be down this dark path of this foolishness that does happen in that industry. And I love the pastor's advice to him. He's like, look, it's hard to deal with stuff when you are young and famous. Because again, him saying how he had a, a hit song or whatever at 10, famous at 14, and hanging out and doing this and that or whatever. So it's hard to deal with life because you're so young. Um, he said the pressure creates pain, the pressure of being famous and what it comes with that. It becomes pain. And then the pain creates the need to, to, to medicate that pain. Because you're so young, you don't know how to work through things. All you know is I'm gonna medicate. I want to numb myself or whatever. And that's what he did. He said, so now you, you need to learn to not medicate your pain, but heal from it. You know, you need to forgive yourself. And twist saying like all this time Based on what he's gone through, he's never forgiven himself for being so young and is not knowing what to do in life. And he was just out here. When you put young people in adult situations and expect them to not make kid-like decisions, it you know it takes them on a path of just you know what I'm saying <sighs> of making mistakes. A lot of a lot of young teenage or younger people who get in this field or whatever and then they just yeah, you know what I'm saying and because the adults around them think oh this is the normal world of sex drugs and rock and roll sometimes people are not there to correct them okay so clearly twist and twist also spoke about I think his daddy is in prison for life or whatever so Clearly, he didn't have the right people. And plus, was, if you ride with Wayne and them, and we know Wayne was heavily on stuff. You know what I'm saying? Girl. See, so he just did not have the correct people around him to, to guide him the right way. And Twitch brings up how he know he has to stay away from that lifestyle that hinders his growth. I said, that's a great statement. I know I have to stay away from the lifestyle that would hinder me growing. Okay, and pastor said, "Look, you know, you have to make sure that your faith journey is not even about not doing bad things because as humans, we, you know, we we fall down, we mess up, you, we're not perfect, so you can't be trying to go on this perfect journey of not doing bad things. However, you know, it's about finding the good things and letting the good things shape you and mold you." I said, "Come on now, pastor, come on now, pastor." He said, "Because your focus." Should be on what he said. No, he said, he said if your if your if your focus is more on what you are leaving and not where you're going, you would end up back where you left. I said, Oh Lord, if your focus is only on what you're leaving, 
what you're walking away from. If that's your main focus, okay, look, I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta back. Okay, but not on where you're going. You're gonna end up back where you left because you're not even focused on your on your future. I said, come on now, Pastor. Let it be known. Let it be known. Okay. Now, Aaliyah and um, what's his man name? Eric. Lil Easy for some reason or some, I don't know why, is 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 dumb. Now, I don't know if it's because, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why he seems to making these dumbass decisions, but he is, okay? So, I live at home being a mom. The kids is there cooking, cleaning, homework, put them to bed, all this stuff. Where's Eric at? The casino. The casino. I was like, ma'am, sir, why? What's going on? Okay, it's it's summoned to me that we have Eric who feels like he just does not have to be a good husband or a good father, or that him just being out in these streets is the way to. I was like, so why are you not trying to be home with your family? How can you not want to be at home? Sometimes, not all the time. I'm not saying all the time. It ain't gotta be all the time. But the fact that he like literally be just feeling like he don't have to even ever, 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 ever go home. And I was like, that is not how things go. That's not how things work. So she calling him. He is ignoring her phone calls. As if she don't matter. I'm like, see. I would have already divorced him because I feel like she's vocal about how she wants him to be home more. He just don't care. He really feel like he don't have to be home. Now, Aaliyah brings up like Eric does not even acknowledge or realize that, you know, she really just wants him home for them to spend time together. Period. That I want him here when the kids when the kids are asleep because that's our that's our time. Eric feel like whenever the kids are sleeping, that's his time to be away. And I'm like, that ain't how it go. So what time do you spend with your wife when she when she not being a, a you know the, the mom and the housekeeper? When do you help her feel like your wife? If you're always gone when she has free time. Okay. So finally he answered the phone. I mean you know I'm playing poker while you why you keep calling me. She's like well fool fool if you answer the phone just tell me that you're busy I won't keep calling you. I keep calling you because your ass won't answer the phone. Okay. And he just because he he really he literally said he little for he literally said, you know, the only time no, he told the people he said the, the, the he said what did he say? He said something like you don't want to be in the house with your family too much. I was like, what? No, he said it's only so much time you can be in the house with the women who you are related to. Okay, this is my time away. I said, Negro, what? Negro, what? You're telling people that you don't want to be at home with your wife and kids, that when it's time for you to spend time with your wife and children, you feel that it's your time to be at a casino. Nigga, get on my face. So we see I was, that was at like eight something. It's now after 4 a.m. And he at the house. Don't have his key. And Aaliyah lock his ass out. She does not open the door. Okay? Because like I told you hours ago, like to not be out this late. And now it's after 4 a.m. And you wind here banging and knocking on the door because he left his key in the house. He had his car key, but not his house keys. Because he could be, why? Because he's used to Aaliyah just being there because he's gone. And she refused. <laughs> she refused to open the door. He was like, you know, I, she know I hate attention outside the house. So because he's outside and they're, you know, talking or whatever, he is. <laughs> I said, get him. Perfect revenge. You want to play? You came in at four. First of all, I would not have went to the window. He would have been outside just knocking. Period. 
you can't get in here and you here at a time where I'm sleeping and keep me stay your ass outside. Who comes home at 4 a.m.? Don't have no key. Wake me up to let you in. And I told you, can you get here at a reasonable time? Stay your ass out the side. Get out my face. You hear me? Anyway, um, <laughs> and she said, you're going to learn today, girl. I said, let them know. You're going to learn? Yes. Mm-hmm. And he had to go sit in the backyard because she would not open the door. If she would open the front door or the back door, it was so funny to me. It was so funny. Now, even if this scene is fake, because again, uh, he's in a different shirt. Because here he in a white shirt. I feel like like they took this, they took scenes of him from when him and JoJo were at the casino and just had that at the time that she was calling him because he was at the casino. And but this was because her outfit is the same. She in the same outfit. So again, I think they took the, the, they took footage of him the one time he was at a casino and they was you filming there. I think this time he they just wasn't filming because when he got home, he had on a black shirt. Okay. Uh so girl, <laughs> leave him like that. Leave him out there. F coming home from a casino at 4 a.m., it'll be F you. F you. So he sat outside, locked out. I don't know how long, but at least. We saw he said outside for at least 10 15 minutes. Okay, anyway, so Eric then go up to see his grandmama and his uncle because he know I'm in I'm in trouble. My wife's upset. Okay, it's some BS. Now I don't know. I'm assuming that's Eric. That's Easy E's mama, um, and not like his mama's mama. So I think I'm guess that's his daddy's mama. Um, and then of course his uncle wife thinks it's Easy brother. So he. He like, that's what I go to for advice, okay? You know what I'm saying? Because Aaliyah left, he locked out the house. They're like, oh, really? We didn't know that. What's going on? So when he tells them how she's upset, and he got with a lot, he'd be gone all the time or whatever, you know, and she don't like it. Come so, but how often do you, how often do you get with the casino? How often do you go? Oh, you know, basically every night that I'm, I can, I go all the time. But, you know, I, I you know, I'm, I'm there. You know, she know where I'm at. Okay. But um, I don't know. And come, I learned it from you. Because you be, I called you and you was at a casino. Come and say, yeah, but I don't have nobody to answer to like you. Okay. You have to roll with the pundits. You can't, you can't mimic your life after someone who does not have a, a spouse and kids to look after. If grown grandma is at the, the casino because she don't have the response, she don't have the same family that you have okay her kids are grown <laughs> so grandma can go wherever she pleases okay and when eric then so i i travel so much or whatever i'm saying and so when the kids asleep that's to me that's my personal time okay i can go that's my time to go relax at the casino okay and you know Aaliyah just has the issue with me, with me gambling and come bruh bruh Grandma said, bro, you have to cut down on gambling. Spend time with your family. Even if you do go gamble, you have to come home at a reasonable time. You can't be out until 4 and 5 a.m. You have to fucking family, nigga. Okay? Grandma should have cussed him out. Like, why aren't you talking with you? Because he was literally talking as if it's no issue with him being a grown married man with 18 kids. And his wife was telling him consistently, I really need you home. I need you home. And you were admitting that you're going gambling every day. But saying, and I'm not a dick. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Now, uncle was like, look, I get you these. You got my gift. Yes, yes. And all people need, they need time. But you have to think about your wife because she's telling you she needs you home and you just saying Fuck you. If she asking you to tell me other, you need to spend time with her. Okay. Well, I just feel like you know what I'm saying she know where I'm at. The kids know where I'm at. I'm not doing nothing. You know, so I'm not doing nothing, nothing wrong. Okay. So why, you know, I don't even leave my phone. He said I put my phone in my pocket because I feel like I don't have to answer it. Because she know where I'm at. So that's why she called me up, and I just don't I don't hear my phone because it's in my pocket. I don't even have it near me. And so I was, nigga, what girl, you sound dumb. Okay. Both from my uncle said, look, you need to have some quality time with your family, bro. 
That don't mean you can't have any time for yourself, but you have to create balance. And Eric feel like I can leave and be gone and be done. And I'm like, because he's stupid. Look at him. Don't he look dumb? He look gullible. I would never want to be on national television making my wife look dumb for being married to me. And I'm completely ignoring all of her signs and complaints. I'm just saying, fuck you. I don't care. I don't care. Anyway, uh, we see a scene where Twist is at like a rehearsal for some music stuff or whatever. And he's about to have a little scene, but chit chat with Lazy. So as they're setting the scene up, we hear Twist before, you know, rehearsing or whatever. And you know, him and, and, and Lazy even talk with us. We see the scene gonna be set up. And Lazy phone ring and Lazy, like, oh, I gotta cut my phone off. Well, we see it's his brother calling. And the brother said, oh, you know, and the brother's like, it's about mom. Now, the brother's crying and yelling and, like, he's, you know, he's frantic. And because he's frantic, you can't really hear what he's saying. He's like, it's mama. It's mama. You know, mama, ain't go, mama in the hospital. He said, mom in the hospital. Mama might not make it. And she, like, it's a distraught person, you know, crying out but trying to tell him what's going on. He's like, wait, what? What? What you mean? What's going on? And so he's not getting. Like, I hope y'all can hear my neighbor's music. But I'm gonna be off in one second. Um, <laughs> oh Lord. Uh, but Lazy is just like you know. Hold on, man. Let, 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 me, let me let me let me take this call. So Lazy end up leaving. So they stop filming, of course. Um, because you know Lazy had to leave, and his mom passed away. I'm like, damn. So we see that at the end of the episode how you know love a memory of Pamela Marie uh, Housey. Uh, my P. Now, you know, Lazy Bone and Flesh and Bone are brothers. So, it was their mom. Um, and she died in September. She was only 67, okay? Um, but, again, we don't know how, but it was, you know, it's all it said was, turns out mom suddenly passed away from whatever that situation, aggressive girl situation was. Um, so, may she rest in peace and, you know, condolences to the family. But it was, I mean, look, the call was so, like, just hearing the, it was a, it was, a, I don't know if the call was from Flesh and Bone, but it was his brother. I don't know if you, I don't know if they have more brothers or whatever, but the person was just, it was just horrible. You know what I'm saying? Um, so again, condolences to Lazy and Flesh and Bone and the family. Okay. Uh, next up, we had Titi. Titi made her way to go see Egypt in Timbuktu. Okay, because Egypt lives about 60 miles outside of Vegas. So she lives far in the middle of nowhere. Ain't nothing but open space, uh, you know what I'm saying, deserts, sun, and dirt. That's it. Now, the driver even pulled up to her house, to Egypt's house. Like, I don't even ever really drive out this far. Okay. TD said, okay, can you please just wait? Like, don't leave me here. You know, please wait. Because, again... First of all, I think the car service was probably just booked for her for that day. Okay. Because who, you know what I'm saying? And whoever drove probably made a lot of money. Because again, to drive out that far, if they, I think they, don't they charge by like the mile or whatever? I don't Uber. Um, but that person made a lot of money that day. Okay. Because for me to drive you here, wait while you film and then drive you back the hour and a half to town. Yeah. I want my money. Now, sitting there, it was weird vibes. Okay. It, they weren't. Because this is the first time we've seen them together in a, in a while, okay? Uh, I can say it was like it was like a vibe, like, I miss you, but it's still weird or whatever. I don't know about your house. You live out so far. Is, is it there? What, what is, it, was, it was a weird vibe, but not like a messy, let's argue vibe. Just a let's, let's test this thing out. So Egypt was like, you know, hi, it's my house. You know saying? It's like this, like that, or whatever. Um, but she also brought up how she did not really want to show Titi the whole house because as she said, me and Sam just moved in. We're still getting the house together. You know, some of the rooms are not you know, some of the rooms are not fully, you know, done or whatever. And so she said, Titi is judgmental. So because she's judgmental, I do not want to show her too much because she'll then start judging me. Okay. So I'll wait to show her to show the rest, like, later on, once the house, like, finished or whatever. Now, T.T. came in judging. <laughs> T.T. came in looking around, like, oh, okay, should we live out here? Okay, this is a, this is a, this is a choice. 
And then and she's like, you want some snacks? Oh, you have a pantry? Yeah, yes, yeah, I have a pantry. And they went to the pantry and, oh, my God, these, oh, my God, these are horrible snacks. You're going to die. Don't give them to the baby. You know, then to have the, the house is so far. It's like a zombie apocalypse walking dead vibe or whatever. And then to have the, oh, this, the house is a death trap. It has, to be, it has to be baby proofed. The house needs to be, be clean. I'm like, that. you just walk in. Now, do I feel like Egypt was saying place is probably dust and dingy? Yes. Because I feel like neither of them are like clean. I also feel like if you live in a desert which is like dust and dirty, you kind of like dust and dirty. Not filthy, nasty, just dust and dirty. So I, I do believe the house is a bit dusty, a little bit dirty, whatever. And they don't seem to be, you know, like housekeepers. Or whatever. So, but I don't think it was like, okay, the house is just nasty. It's stinking here. Is y'all raising pigs? Mm -hmm. But walking into my house for the first time, when you trying to get back on good terms, like, just keep the judgment of, uh, down a bit. Say all that in the confession. Not say it to her, girl. Anyway. And plus, only that. Egypt was like, what, two days pregnant? And to me, saying, hey, the, the, the house is a death trap. It's dirty. She not due today. They have enough time to baby proof their house to get it clean. Okay, before the baby get here. Now I believe she probably has recently had the baby because she was due, I believe, in February, because she was saying earlier how for um I'm trying to go to her page. Uh for Grace Whitaker, Eva Chris. I think her name right. She was saying before that Sam court date got pushed like February 3rd. And that was around the same time that she's due. So I feel like she's probably either just had a baby um, or something. Now, she posted three days ago because uh, Happy Birthday to Sam just turned, Sam just turned 30. Lord Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. Anyway, um... I believe that be, but yeah, I, I, I'm 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 just assuming that she has had the baby because you know what I'm saying. She quiet too. Anyway, but again, she has time to to fix the house up and get it ready for baby need that be. So Egypt also brings up you know hey the wedding's coming up the second wedding for us. You're invited. You and Shana both invited. I want to make it clear that you and Shana both invited. We're not excluding him. You know you both can come. Now she also brings up how you know Sam and Sean half resolve whatever issue they have but she wants them both there because she know sam no she know that sean is you know tg's husband so tg will probably want him there so she's not going to exclude you know him even though tt wanted to exclude sam from her wedding okay back when they were beefing but again i can i can respect that Egypt was trying to at least say hey i'm not gonna do the you did to me i want to start over I miss you. You can tell they miss each other. But to me, TT is holding on to a bit of a grudge. She is less likely trying to let it go. She's trying to, I guess she's trying to, you know, test the waters, which is fine. But I'm like, girl, go to the damn wedding. Don't say, they've already had, I missed the first wedding. I can go to the goddamn wedding. Because if you do not go, then you are the one trying to keep up the BS. Because again, you, you cool, you kind of go back cool with Pepper. Okay, again, baby step, but again, go to the damn wedding. Leave it be. Okay. Um, now they also discuss Sam's court date. And she brings my way. I, you know, look, first of all, they keep pushing the date back and back and back and back and back. I just hope they will kind of just drop it because they keep pushing the court date back. So I don't know. But if Sam has to go away for some time or whatever, I would just make my child my main focus. I'd be a great mom or whatever. I would be a mom first. And that would be, you know, my life, you know, if that was to happen. Um, my teacher brings up in response to that how, you know, well, Sean travels a lot for work. Uh, not that he's in prison, okay, but Sean at, at times are gone for like three weeks at a time, okay? So for her, you know, it's still time when she is basically a single mom. And so it's like you have to just plan accordingly to whatever your, you know, life circumstances is. And I feel like TT in Egypt life kind of it's the same in the aspect of both of them are young first-time moms with men 
who you know don't be around that much. Again, if Sam go to jail, she will be a single mom for how, however long he's gone. And for Titi, Sean is in Jamaica. You know, had the time of 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 the life. So, you know, I mean, that's something they can both bond over, okay? Um, but I, I like the fact that it was a conversation, okay? And then, you know, it's time to go. But she had been there for a while because it, when she got there, it was daytime. When she left, it was nighttime. Okay, um, I'm, I'm leaving. My, my Uber is outside. Okay, I, I made them wait because I did not think they would, you know, come back and get me later on because it's so far. Okay, and so I don't think I'll be back because <laughs> you live too far. However, we can FaceTime. We can FaceTime. I hope we get more scenes of them fixing stuff. I don't mind seeing that. I want to see TT in Egypt get back to a better place. I want Egypt to have people in her life outside of Sam. And again, we always said Sam was the glue that broke the camel's back, meaning he was the one who caused so much discourse between the family before. And, you know, now it's just, it's just him in Egypt. So I want her to have friends, other women, other moms who can help her, you know, grow as a woman, as a mom. And so she has a freaking village outside of just him you know, outside of him and her mom, okay? So, we're going we gonna to see how they go. Anyway, y'all, that was the whole ever. So, do not forget to like the video, okay? Comment in the comment section. Also, follow me on social media at Gilly's Corner on IG, also on Twitter. And y'all don't to subscribe to my channel. And again, today, I will be live for the after show, the chit chat for Rihanna's uh, halftime performance, okay? So, after she performed, come on around here for after chit chat tonight. It's already set up for eight. But because I don't know what time it will happen, we shall see. But I got to go. Okay. I love you all. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.